This ASRock ITX board is an interesting piece of tech. It features a fanless Intel N100 4-core SoC with a desktop RAM slot and more expansion capabilities than your average mini PC. At 130 US dollars, it seems relatively cheap. However, unlike a mini PC, there are a bunch of extra parts you need to bring to this DIY party to get it started. But the cool thing with boards like this is you can put it together just the way you like it. So, what do you need to get up and running, and how does it perform? But before that, Ease Us To Do Backup Home is an award-winning backup solution to keep your data safe, backup, clone, upgrade, or transfer your system easily, and protect it from ransomware. To Do Backup Home even supports backing up to the cloud. Trial it for free with a link in the video description. Intel's N100 CPU is an entry-level 4-core Alder Lake N processor which has some decent budget performance behind it. AV1 hardware decoding allows 4K60 video to playback smoothly, and it can do a bunch of other things. Although this board is probably not going to be used for those things, as you're most likely interested in its specific features which suit networking, business, and industrial uses. In the box is the board, M.2 screws, a SATA power cable with two SATA connectors that is powered off the motherboard, a manual, dual SATA cables, and the I.O. shield. The bare minimum to get started with the ASRock N100DC ITX is a stick of DDR4 RAM with max support for 32GB, 3200MHz. I've got an 8GB, 3200 stick for this build. You also need to either run an OS off a USB drive, or plonk in an M.2 NVMe, or 2.5 inch SATA storage drive and install an OS on it. The N100DC ITX supports up to two SATA drives, so three storage drives total with the NVMe, which runs at Gen 3 X2 speed due to limited PCIe lanes provided by the N100. You also need to source a 19 volt barrel jack power supply. How many amps or watts will depend on your build, but I'm using this Intel NUC replacement power supply, which is overkill. It provides up to 120 watts of power. The motherboard manual gives you an estimate of how much power you need. Anyway, in summary, RAM, drive, OS, and power supply to get you started. An ITX case is optional, but recommended. For the case, I picked this M03 ITX off eBay for under $25 US. Thanks to Fanless Tech for the suggestion. Apart from the front panel, it's made out of metal and has plenty of holes for airflow. It also supports a 2.5 inch storage drive on the rack. My only complaint is that the front USB ports are only USB 2, while the ASRock board supports a USB 3 front panel header, so I'm missing out on two front USB 3 ports. But at least there's a USB 2 front panel header on the board, so they do work. Speaking of ports, the N100 DC ITX has a PS2 mouse and keyboard combo, 4 USB 2, Gigabit LAN, VGA, HDMI 2.1 TMDS, a COM port, dual USB 3 5 gigabit, and audio jacks. Based on the fact that it has a VGA and COM port, I'd say this is targeting a specific market. The board does not come with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You'll need to bring your own M.2 card and antennas. But at least it has the cutouts for the antennas in the I.O. shield already. Some other things of interest on the board are the two chassis fan connectors and the PCIe 3 X4 slot, which supports X2 mode. And before you ask, no, it doesn't support a graphics card. Finally, for those interested in how the heatsink is mounted onto the board, in case you want to change it, the distance between the mounting points is 2 inches each way. Building in the M03 ITX case is easy. A couple of screws, and then slide off the side panel. Then unscrew the storage drive rack. Attach the I.O. shield, put the board in, and connect the front panel headers. Alright, let's test this sucker. One cool thing about this board is you'll get proper BIOS support with updates, and the visual BIOS is nice and easy to use. I did try Ubuntu before installing Windows, and it worked fine straight off the USB. For Windows, ASRock also has an auto driver installer app, which makes getting up and running real easy. Well, as long as you have internet access. This, along with the BIOS support, is something that's really lacking in the mini PC space from other vendors, and is much appreciated. 
I've reviewed so many mini PCs with Intel's N100 this year that I'm very, very familiar with its capabilities and how it behaves. And usually in the budget mini PC space, fanless means worse performance. But let's see how the ASRock board holds up against the mostly actively cooled competition. With a single core score of 843, the ASRock is at the bottom of the N100 CPUs, an 11% drop compared to the best performer. In multi-core, again, it's at the bottom, and the board, like most N100 minis I've tested, has a 25 watt power limit by default. So I forced 30 watts in the BIOS, and the score was even worse. Thermal throttling city here. Anyway, at 25 watts, it's trailing the best score by 23%. Okay, so you want me to commit the grave sin of adding a fan to a fanless PC? Fine. There we are. Big enough for you? Ugh, I feel dirty now. I'm gonna need a shower after this. Alright, well, now it's running nice and cool. 70C is the ceiling. All it needed was a 120mm fan blowing air all over its face. So, single core is now around what's expected from the N100 with a 30 watt power limit and fan on top of it. In multi-core, it's again running as expected. Not the top performer, but a good result and it's still cool and quiet. In video encoding, it also now performs as expected for a mini with DDR4. The graphics benchmark was unaffected by temp or power limit and has the ASRock board in line with the Morphine M9 mini PC, which also used DDR4 memory. DDR5 does help push iGPU performance on an N100 further, but it's not a big deal. It's 4% behind the best result in DX11 and almost 3% in DX12. So, a minor drop in integrated graphics with DDR4. If you wanted to play some games on it, the Intel N100 can handle some eSports titles and emulation up to GameCube, PS2 era at 720p. You can even play GTA 5 at 720p and get a playable frame rate. But I don't see this board being used for that. It's more for a home server or media streaming setup. But for those usage cases, it doesn't really have a large number of storage options or even 2.5 gigabit LAN. Idle power draw was unimpressive at 15 watts. Maximum power draw is also on the higher end, peaking at 39 watts with the increased power limit. The build was silent without a fan, but was still quiet with one as well. SSD temp will depend on whether you add a heatsink on it or not. With a 120mm fan, it should stay cool enough. To summarize, this is a unique DIY product and will fit certain uses. It has proper software and firmware support, and it's fanless. But the included heatsink isn't beefy enough for the CPU. It works okay, but the CPU runs hot and thermal throttles. Jerry rig a bigger heatsink or 120mm fan over it and it'll run better. There are limited usage cases where you'll want this over an N100 mini PC that can be had for as low as 150 US dollars. But if you need the ports, PCIe card slot, or extra storage capabilities, then the ASRock N100DC ITX is basically the only option. And I'm glad it exists. The price is reasonable, but if it had a Wi-Fi card with antennas included, it would be more appealing. So, that's the DIY option. But if you're looking for a pre-built fanless N100 mini PC, why not check out the Neosmay AC8N right here? I thought it was pretty good. Cheers!